When Sarah first set foot on the old, overgrown forest path, which the locals called the Trail of the Forgotten, she could not imagine that this journey would change her life forever. She grew up in the suburbs of the small American town of Blackmore, Pennsylvania. The town was quiet and unremarkable, except that it was shrouded in strange stories and legends. Among them was one that only the oldest residents whispered about, the legend of the cursed man. This man, according to rumors, once lived on the edge of the forest, next to the very old route she was following now. Everyone said he was quiet, didn't touch anyone, but one day he was accused of a crime he didn't commit. He disappeared as suddenly as he appeared in these places, and since then his spirit has allegedly been roaming the forest, taking revenge on everyone who crosses his territory. Sarah, of course, never believed in such stories, considering them fiction to scare children and random tourists. She was a sensible, practical woman who believed only in facts and logic. But that day, her mind slowly began to give way before the inexplicable fear that gripped her as soon as she went deeper into the forest. The trail, which at first looked like an ordinary forest path, became something alien. The trees seemed to shrink, the branches hung low, almost touching her face, and the wind, which used to be light and refreshing, became viscous, bringing strange, whispering sounds as if someone was sneaking behind her. Sarah came here for a reason. Her brother Mike disappeared a few weeks ago. He was always a bit of an oddball, fond of mysticism and legends, but he never left for long. The night he disappeared, he told her that he was going to explore the old Blackmore trails and find out the truth about the disappearances of people in this forest. She tried to stop him, but Mike was stubborn, and no one has seen him since. The police conducted several searches, but to no avail. Everyone quickly chalked up his disappearance to an accident. Maybe he just got lost. But Sarah knew her brother. He was careful and always prepared in advance for such trips. She couldn't believe that he could just disappear. She sighed, adjusted her backpack on her shoulder, and continued on her way. The deeper she went into the forest, the weirder the atmosphere became. The feeling that someone was watching her became too obvious to ignore. Sarah quickened her pace, but the path began to wind. By the time the sun was almost below the horizon, the forest had transformed. The trees seemed to form natural walls, surrounding her from all sides. The sky had darkened, and the moon, which was supposed to light her way, looked like a cloudy spot barely breaking through the dense fog. The steps. Sarah stopped abruptly. Someone was with her in the woods. She heard distinct footsteps, not animals, not birds, but heavy human footsteps. Someone was slowly following her. She turned around, but all she saw was a mist that was spreading across the ground, enveloping the trees like thick smoke. Ahead, the road led to an old, dilapidated house that she could see in the distance. Her heart was beating faster, but she couldn't just turn around and leave. Something deep in her soul was pushing her to move on. Perhaps it was fear for his brother. Perhaps it was guilt. As she approached the house, Sarah noticed that the door was ajar. There was absolute silence inside, with only the occasional creak of branches from the wind. The house was old, wooden, with broken windows and a dilapidated roof. There were age-tarnished inscriptions on the walls, painted with something dark, resembling dried blood. She saw personal items scattered in the corner. They belonged to Mike. Sarah froze when she heard that rustle again, but this time it came not from the forest, but from the house. Something or someone was inside, in this abandoned place. A shudder ran through her body. She took out a flashlight and, taking a deep breath, stepped inside. The floorboards creaked menacingly under her feet, as if warning her that she shouldn't be here. At the back of the house behind the dark kitchen, she found a small staircase leading to the basement. It was from there that the sounds came. Her fingers were trembling, but she still opened the door and went downstairs, descending into the gloomy dungeon. The light of the flashlight was fading, but it was enough to notice the bloody footprints on the floor. They led to an old stone altar in the center of the basement, on which lay a photograph of Mike. Suddenly, something made her heart stop. She heard breathing. Someone was standing behind her. Turning slowly, she saw him. This was the man the legend spoke of. His face was distorted, as if he had experienced something terrible. 
The deep hollows of his eyes stared at her with cold hatred, and his skin was gray and cracked, like an old porcelain figurine. He was not just a man. He was a cursed man, a spirit who, according to rumors, took the souls of those who dared to cross his borders. You shouldn't have come here, he whispered, his voice sounding like a whisper of wind, full of pain and anger. Sarah froze, unable to utter a word. All the fear she had felt throughout her life was now compressed into one moment. The man's gaze pierced her, and she realized that he was not just a phenomenon. He was the embodiment of all the fear and horror that she could only imagine. I came for my brother, she could barely say, her voice sounding weak, as if she was losing strength. Where is he? He took a step closer, and Sarah felt a chill creep over her body. She couldn't believe that this man was real. His breathing was harsh and fetid, as if he hadn't breathed in years. You don't understand, he said, and there was a certain tragedy in his voice. I was betrayed. My world was destroyed, and now I'm here to take revenge. Sarah felt hatred and pity bubbling up inside her. She knew that her brother might have fallen into the same traps that trapped him. She remembered all the nights they had talked about their fears and hopes. Now she understood that if she didn't save him, he might become the next victim of this entity. I'm not afraid of you, she said, looking into his eyes, although her inner voice screamed for help. I came for my brother, and I'm not leaving until I find him. The man froze, his eyes widened in surprise. He seemed confused. At that moment, there was a crash behind Sarah. She turned around and saw something starting to rise from the corner of the basement. A creature made up of shadows and darkness was making its way towards her in an ominous dance. It was gigantic, with outstretched limbs and many eyes that shone like stars in the dark. You shouldn't stay here, the cursed man said again, his voice even more harsh. It will take your soul, just as it took mine. Sarah felt her heart racing and instinctively took a step back. She couldn't believe that all this was really happening. The damned man she didn't want to believe in turned out to be real, and his presence was terrifying. But there was another feeling next to him, it was fear for Mike. Where is my brother? She repeated, trying to keep her voice calm. I know he's here, I'm feeling it. Her question hung in the air and for a moment they both froze, as if time had stopped. The cursed man's gaze became less aggressive and something like regret flashed through it. You shouldn't have come here he finally said, his voice sounding calmer now. This forest is taking people away, and your brother has become its victim. Sarah, feeling a surge of hope, took a step forward. Why? Why is this happening? What's going on here? The man lowered his head as if he remembered his past. This forest was the place where I once lived. I just wanted to be left alone. I didn't want to hurt anyone, but the locals left me no choice. They accused me of something I didn't do, and now the forest is demanding payment. Everyone who comes here. Sarah felt her heart fill not only with fear, but also with sympathy for this man. He was a victim, just like her brother. Where is he? When is it? She asked again, her voice firmer. How can I find him? The damned man raised his head and looked at her, his eyes filled with a kind of sincerity. If you really want to save him, you need to go back to the day he disappeared. Find his tracks and follow them. But be careful, the forest doesn't want you to leave its borders. He's going to get in your way, and I can't help you. Sarah felt her resolve boil up inside her. I can't leave him here. He didn't deserve this. She turned to leave, but the man stopped her. You should know that not everyone who disappeared can be found. This forest is taking people away, and I can't guarantee that you'll be able to bring it back. But if you decide, do it quickly before the forest takes you too. Sarah nodded, and gathering her strength, she climbed out of the basement, determined to find her brother. The road back to the exit of the house seemed much longer than the way she had come. Every rustle, every sound caused her to panic, but she couldn't let fear get the better of her. When she went outside, she noticed how the forest around her had changed. The trees seemed even more gloomy and menacing. She listened to every rustle and moved forward trying to find the very tracks that the cursed man was talking about. Sarah stopped and began to look around. She knew that she needed to look not only for traces of her brother, but also for signs that could indicate his location. 
She remembered that Mike always left some kind of marks when he explored new places. Looking around, she noticed broken branches and small piles of leaves that could point to his path. Gathering her courage, Sarah began to move along the path, trying to follow his footsteps. Soon she came across a small stream. The water flowed with a rapid flow and she began to look for traces that could lead her further. She bent down and saw that there was a small object lying on one of the stones. It was a piece of cloth. Sarah's heart began to beat faster. It was part of Mike's outfit. Gathering her strength, she continued to move further into the forest. Every step was difficult for her. The forest was getting thicker and thicker, and from time to time, she had to make her way through the thorny bushes. She walked, hoping that her brother was still alive and waiting for her help. Finally, she came out into a small clearing. In the center stood an old abandoned hut, hidden under moss and vines. Sarah's heart beat even faster when she recognized this place. She had heard Mike talking about the old huts that had once been part of a forest settlement. Mike! She screamed, her voice echoing in the silence. She ran to the hut and opened the door. It was dark inside, and only a faint light filtered through the cracks in the walls. Sarah, illuminating the space with a flashlight, began to look for traces of her brother. She saw dirty footprints on the floor and several other scattered objects that belonged to him. Mike! She screamed again, her voice full of hope and fear. But there was no answer. There was a dead silence inside the hut, and this only increased her anxiety. She knew she couldn't give up. It was necessary to find him at any cost. Sarah began to look around the cabin, peering behind cupboards and into corners. Suddenly, an old board that looked slightly ajar caught her attention. She bent down to check and found a small secret door. A thrill ran down her spine, but she couldn't stop. Summoning all her strength, Sarah opened the door and holding her breath looked inside. There in the semi-darkness, she saw what made her heart stop. Her brother, Mike, was sitting on the floor, his face pale and exhausted. Mike, stop it, she screamed rushing to him. He looked at her with surprise and relief. Sarah, you've come, he said, his voice weak but full of hope. She hugged him and tears of joy rolled down her cheeks. I was looking for you. I couldn't leave you here. Mike looked at her gratefully, but then his face became serious again. We need to get out of here. This forest. He won't let us go that easily. Sarah nodded and helped him up. Together, they headed back to the exit, but the forest around them was still hostile. Each step was difficult and soon they felt the tension build up. As if the forest was becoming even more ominous, the trees seemed to shrink around them. Sarah felt panic creeping over her, but she tried to hold on. They couldn't let fear get the better of them. They stopped for a moment to catch their breath. We have to find a way back, Mike said, his voice full of determination. Sarah looked around for familiar landmarks. There, she pointed to the path that led towards the light. They rushed in that direction, but a moment later they heard a loud crash. The trees began to fall, and the ground seemed to be bursting underfoot. Run, Sarah shouted, pulling Mike after her. They ran, despite the fact that their legs could barely hold them. The forest seemed to be trying to hold them back, but they weren't going to give up. The old hut was left behind, and they ran out onto a familiar path. Sarah felt hope returning. We're almost there, she shouted when she saw a light in the distance, but the forest wasn't going to let them go that easily. A huge shadow suddenly appeared on the path, and they froze in fear. It was the cursed man who appeared before them again. You can't leave, he said, his voice bitter. The forest will take you away. Sarah couldn't believe she was seeing him again, but she wasn't going to give up. We're not leaving until you let us go, she replied, feeling strength and determination fill her. The damned man froze, as if he remembered something, and a spark of understanding flashed in his eyes. The damned man froze, as if he remembered something, and a spark of understanding flashed in his eyes. If you can get through the forest, maybe he will leave you alone. But if you get lost, I can't help you. Sarah and Mike were standing on the trail, and darkness was gathering around them. The cursed man hidden in the shadows of the trees seemed increasingly sullen, his face expressing a mixture of regret and anger. We can't leave you, he said. I was the one who sent your brother into this forest, and now he's going to pay for my sins. 
he will have to leave, as will everyone who came here. Sarah froze, her heart skipped a beat in fear. Did you send him to the forest? How could you? She screamed, her voice echoing in the silence. I was lonely, the cursed man said and his voice sounded bitter. I killed him. I killed those who came after me. But maybe they deserved it. This forest cannot be lifeless, it requires sacrifices. Sarah felt a wave of anger and fear sweep over her. How could you do this to people? Did you kill them to preserve your existence? She shouted, her voice shaking with rage. I was betrayed. He replied, and there were tears in his eyes. These people came after me to get revenge. They didn't understand that I was a victim of circumstances. I was forced to defend myself. At that moment, Mike, who had been staying by her side all this time, pulled his sister along, pointing to the path leading to the exit. Sarah, we need to leave. We can't listen to him. He's just a maniac, he said, his voice full of fear. But the moment they decided to leave, a figure jumped out of the bushes. She was all in black with a knife in her hand and her face was covered in blood. Sarah and Mike froze in place, their eyes wide with horror. Did you think you could escape from this place? The figure said, approaching them with a creepy smile. You who came here, like many before you, will be a part of this forest forever. Sarah felt a chill creep into her heart. This was the evil that the locals were whispering about. The old legend of the maniac who torments the souls of the lost has come to life before their eyes. Leave while you can, the cursed man shouted, but his screams were lost in the sounds that came from the figure. Mike grabbed his sister's arm and they started backing away. But the forest seemed to shrink around them. Every movement was difficult. They felt the end coming and panic gripped them. I know how you want to leave, the figure said, her voice melodious and creepy. But you can't leave this place. This forest will take your soul. Sarah looked at Mike, and in his eyes she saw the same determination that burned in her heart. We have to fight she whispered, looking up at the maniac. Mike nodded, and they started moving to the side, trying to get away from the figure, but it was fast and nimble. Suddenly, she lunged at them with a knife, and Sarah only managed to dodge when the blade flashed past her head. Don't leave me! Mike shouted as the maniac suddenly turned on him. Sarah, full of fear and rage, grabbed a stick lying on the ground, and standing between her brother and the attacker, struck. It was too late. The maniac did not stop, and the blade entered Mike as he tried to protect his sister. Mike. She screamed as she saw him fall to the ground, his eyes filled with horror and pain. Sarah. He said, his voice barely audible, and he grabbed her hand. Run away. Don't stop. Sarah felt her heart bursting with pain. She couldn't leave him. No, I will not leave you. She screamed, squeezing his hand. But the forest around them was dying down and the figure took another step forward, preparing for the final blow. You can't save him, she said leaning toward Sarah. He's already part of the forest. The second the knife went back to Mike, Sarah got down on her knees and full of rage screamed in the maniac's face. I'm gonna kill you. The words burst out of her mouth and without thinking about the consequences, she grabbed the knife which fell to the ground. She rushed at the maniac, but he dodged, and her blow landed in the air. You can't stop me, the figure said with hatred. I will always be here among the shadows of the forest. Sarah was on her knees, feeling fear and rage overwhelm her. Only the sounds of the forest could be heard around, the silence became almost oppressive. She turned to her brother, who was lying on the ground, his face distorted with pain. It was terrible and the thought that she could have saved him tore her apart. The maniac, who was now one step closer, was looking at her with a creepy smile on his face. He was slowly approaching, the knife in his hand glittering in the dim light. You can't save him, he said, his voice full of mockery. You've already lost it. Sarah, struggling with excitement, grabbed the knife that had fallen out of the maniac's hands during their fight. It was her only chance. She jumped to her feet and rushed forward. My heart was pounding so hard that it seemed like it was going to burst out of my chest. But the maniac was nimble, and he jumped sideways, dodging her blow. Sarah felt cold sweat trickle down her back. She was determined, but at the same time she realized that her chances of winning were fading before her eyes. Kill me? The maniac laughed. You can't do it. I've been here too long. This forest is my home, and you can't change that. 
Sarah took a step back, her mind in a panic looking for a way out of the situation. She turned to look at Mike and saw his breathing becoming more and more rarefied. Mike? She screamed, realizing that time was running out. I can't leave you. Listen to me, Sarah, he whispered, trying to speak so that she could hear him. You have to leave. I won't survive. Tears fill her eyes, but she couldn't give up. I'm not leaving you, she shouted, addressing the maniac. You're going to pay for everything you've done. Pay? He laughed as he approached. I'm just a tool of this forest. He demands sacrifices, and I'm just doing his will. Sarah, realizing that the maniac's words were partly true, looked around. The forest was full of traces of fear and pain. She noticed that among the trees were the remains of old things that belonged to previous victims. Scraps of clothing, rusty tools, remnants of accessories that had clearly been here for too long. This place has really become a grave for many. Do you think I'm going to leave you here? She said, gathering her strength. I'm not going to be a part of your game. At that moment, Sarah saw an old board discarded nearby. Remembering the lessons on how to use the surrounding objects in emergency situations, she quickly picked it up. It was her only hope. If you don't want more victims here, then you have to leave, she said with firmness, her voice trembling with emotion. The maniac, sensing her determination, froze for a moment. He didn't seem to expect to see such determination in her eyes. You don't have the guts to do this, he said, but there was a note of uncertainty in his voice. Sarah took a step forward and swung the board, but the maniac dodged again. His movements were nimble and fast. Suddenly he rushed to Mike, but Sarah, full of fear and rage, threw the board in his direction. The board hit the maniac, and he hesitated. This gave Sarah the opportunity to run up to her brother and try to pick him up. Hold on, Mike. We're gonna get out of here. She screamed, trying to help him up. But at this time, the maniac, who became enraged, rushed at them again. His knife is flashing, and he's pointing it at Sarah. She jumped sideways, but the knife still touched her arm, leaving a deep cut. Pain shot through her, but she didn't let herself give up. Go away, Mike said, his voice full of pain and fear. Run, Sarah. Sarah, turning around, saw that the maniac close to her was ready to deliver the decisive blow. She felt rage flare up in her soul. This man had taken her family, his dark deeds had to end. She grabbed a knife that was still nearby and pointed it at the maniac. I won't let you take another soul, she screamed, rushing to attack. The maniac tried to dodge, but her blow was accurate. She hit him in the shoulder, and he screamed in pain, stepping back. That gave her time to pull Mike away from his clutches. We're leaving. She shouted as they started running together towards the path that led to the exit from the forest. But the maniac was not going to give up. He jumped to his feet and rushed after them, despite the wound. You will not leave me, he shouted, his voice filled with rage. Sarah and Mike were running, their hearts pounding with fear. They knew they couldn't afford to stop. The forest around them became more and more ominous. The trees seemed alive as if they were trying to stop them on their way to freedom. Each step was difficult, and soon they felt their strength running out. We need to find a way out, Mike said, his voice full of determination, but he was barely able to stand up from exhaustion. Sarah looked back and saw the maniac approaching them. She screamed and pulled Mike after her. Run, she screamed, her voice echoing in the silence of the forest. Through all the suffering and horror, they continued to run. Finally, they ran out into the clearing, but at that time the maniac caught up with them. This is the end, he said, his voice filled with hatred. Sarah stopped, not knowing what to do. She could feel fear and panic engulfing her. But at the moment when she was about to give up, suddenly there was a dull sound, and an old man with a gun appeared from behind. Get away from them, you bastard, he shouted, pointing the gun at the maniac. The maniac froze, his face distorted with rage. You can't save them, he said, looking at the old man. But the old man did not listen, and, without waiting for an answer, shot at the maniac. The bullet hit him in the chest, and he fell to the ground, his body stopped moving. Sarah and Mike stood gasping in fear and pain, their hearts pounding in their chests. They turned to the old man who came up to them, his face full of determination. You're safe, he said, looking around. The force won't, won't take you anymore. Sarah felt tears welling up in her eyes. She couldn't believe they had survived. 
She looked at Mike, and his eyes were shining with gratitude. We are. We are alive, she said, not believing in her happiness. The old man nodded, and they slowly began to leave the forest. The forest finally left them alone, but there was a wound in Sarah's heart. She knew that this horror would haunt them all their lives. But they were free now, and that was the most important thing.